Hi everyone, welcome again to my channel, Math is Fun channel. Again, this channel is an educational channel to help you understand your lessons in mathematics. And aside from that, this channel is very helpful for you to develop your skills in mathematics and to improve your performance in math. And of course, this is intended to those who are answering the modular approach or doing their modules out there and also do those who are doing their online classes out there this is very helpful to build your concept about your lessons in mathematics so please do not forget to share this video and of course do not forget to subscribe after watching this video so to start with our discussion our topic will be about measures of central tendency but in this uh, time, we will be focusing on the measures of central tendency for grouped data. So to start with, let's have a review first before we go to the grouped data. We discussed last time about the ungrouped data. So to review for the measures of central tendency in a group data, I, what, I, what I mean is in an ungrouped data, then let's have to revisit first the meaning of measures of central tendency. So to uh, review about its meaning, we discussed that the measures of central tendency, it is a measure that describes a set of data by identifying the central position in the data set as a single value. So please do not forget that one. Again, when we talk about measures of central tendency, we describe a set of data in here by identifying the central points in the data set as a single value. So in short, we call it the measures of average. So there are three most common measures in uh, uh, under the measures of central tendency, we have the mean, median, and mode. So in different situations class, some measure become more appropriate to use than the others, just like in the mean. If there are extreme values, you cannot use the mean. You can use the, instead you can use the median and mode. But since median is more popular than the uh, mode, so, it's better to use the median when it comes to or when there are extreme values that exist in your given set of data. So I hope you're going to, you could still remember that one. So to proceed, so we mentioned the mean for ungrouped data last time in the measures of central tendency. As I have said, the mean is the average. To find the mean, you add up all the numbers and then divide by the number of uh, data that you have or number of numbers. Examples you can see there. To find the mean for this given set of data, you will just add them all. As you can see, we add them all and divide it by the number of data of the data that we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there are nine of them. So the answer or the average or the mean is 15. Note that the mean is not a value from the original list. Take down note of that. This is a common result. Do not assume that the mean will be one of the original numbers. So I hope you could still remember that. Uh, you will be able to remember that one. I will expect that one from you. So now let's proceed to the median. As I mentioned last time, when we talk about median class, the median is the middle. Say with me, middle, middle value in the list of numbers. To find the median, your numbers have to be listed in numerical orders. So you may have sort the list first. So you have to arrange it from the from lowest or from the smallest to largest value. So for an odd number, do not forget, uh, example 15287, just uh, take the middle value, five. So that's already your median. For the even numbers, Example, we have it here, 1, 5, 2, 10, 8, 7. As you can see, there are two uh, middle values after you arrange them from smallest to large, uh, largest, la uh, largest value. So as you can see, we will just get the average of 5 and 7. So add them, 5 plus 7, divide by 2, that gives you 6. So you already have a median for even numbers, which is 6. So I hope you can follow. And of course, for the mode, as I mentioned last time, the mode is the value that occurs most often 
if no number is repeated, then there is no mode for the list. So to find the mode for the set of data, example, we have these number of data that we have for ungrouped. Again, we are we are still in ungrouped uh, data. Sort the numbers. So after you sort the numbers, then you will be able to find out that there are that uh, 13 occurs most frequently or it occurs most oftenly rather. So meaning to say the mode is 13 in here. So as I mentioned last time, if there are, uh, it is possible that we have two modes, three modes or two or more. So if there are two modes, meaning to say there are bimodal. If there are three modes, it's, we call it trimodal. And if it is more than three, then we have it or we can call it a multimodal. So I hope you'll be able to remember that one. So now let's proceed. Sorry, my hair is messy. Okay, so now let's proceed to the next. Now, we will be focusing on the grouped data. So when we say grouped data, what's the difference between the group and ungrouped? Ungrouped data is... Uh, actually, you can only use the group data or the formula for the measures of central tendency for group data when the number is more than 25. So if it's less than 25, you can still arrange them or you can still compute them or get their mean, median, and mode. If you're asked to compute their measures of central tendency, but if it's more than 25, then it's possible for you to group the data. But in this case, I already grouped the data and I already provided the table. So I hope you can follow. So let's start with the mean for group data. For, for the mean or getting the mean for group data, so always remember to find the mean, do not forget the symbol used of a grouped data using the long method, use the formula. This is the formula that we usually used, okay? In solving for the mean for group data flow. So please take the note of that so that you will be able to follow. So you have, uh, we, we have to define them. Your F there is your frequency of the class interval. So when we say uh, frequency, that means the tally. Okay, so next is midpoint. The midpoint is, of course, the midpoint of the class presumed to be the mean of the values grouped under this interval so that we can have it the middle or the midpoint of the class interval. So later on, you will encounter that one. So uh, don't be so excited. Let's just proceed to the next so that you can follow how we use or how can we use this formula in getting the mean for the group data. So now, again, the mean may often be confused with the median mode or range. The mean is the arithmetic average. Do not forget, the arithmetic average refers to the mean of a set of, of values or distribution. So do not forget it. So let's have an example. The following table gives the frequency distribution of the number of orders received each day during the past 50 days at the office of a mail order company. Now calculate the mean. So we have here the given value of, or the table that we have. It's already arranged. So that you grouped from 10 to 12, of course, you have four. Again, this is given. We already tallied them. So we just tallied them. From uh, 10 to 12, there are four. Um, what, what I mean is there are four uh, data under 10 to 12, under the class interval 10 to 12, and under a class interval 13 to 15, you have 12 of them, and 16 to 18, 20, 19 to 21, we have 14. In short, we have 50, um, 50 companies or 50 uh, given set of data that we have all in all. So now let's proceed to the next. Again, this is given already the frequency distribution or frequent, uh, the frequency that we have in this given set of data. So please do, do not be confused. Okay. Do not be confused about it. That's given already. So now, so what will we do? If you could still remember the formula, the formula that we have, this one, remember? So this is your clue. You need, in order to use this formula, you need to know your F and your X as well as your N. So in this given set of data, this is the given. We'll go back to the given, this one. We all know your N already. So that's 50. So meaning to say your N is 50, then of course you have to, this summation means, sorry, I'll just have to clear it up. This summation means you add them all. You add all the 
values that you have or the product of your f and x. So you have a given of uh, your given f based on the table here. You already have your f, right? So now your problem is how to get your x. If you just listen to the description a while ago, when we say x, that means the midpoint. So from to 12, from 10 to 12, the midpoint is 11. Imagine 10, 11, 12. Which, well, which one is the midpoint? Of course, the 11. So 13 to 15, the midpoint is 14. Very easy. 13, 14, 15. The midpoint is 14. 16 to 18, we have 17. 19 to 21, you have 20 or we have 20. After that, you just multiply them. 4 times 11. 4 times 11, that gives you 44. So on and so forth. 12 times 14, 168. 20 times 17, you have 340. And of course, for 14 times 20, you have 280. So I hope you can follow. So by following this formula, so you have to sum it up, your f of x, and that gives you 832. So now the summation of f x is 832 divided by your n. We already got your n a while ago, as you as you if you could still remember. Your n is there. 50. That's why 832 divided by 50, that gives you 16.64. We have to use two decimal places in getting your mean, okay? Do not forget about that one. So, uh, as our standard, so that it will be easier for us to uh, base our answer, our final answer with the standards that we have in decimal places. So please don't forget to find the mean you have to, for, to get the, uh, or use this formula. Again, what do we need? Of course, we need your f, we need your x, you need your fx, and the summation of fx, and of course, your n. Do not forget how or the requirements that uh, in order for us to manipulate or to use rather the formula for the mean in a group data. So do not forget the table, what's in the table in order to solve for the mean, okay? So I hope you can follow. That's my secret. I have to really memorize all of these. What are the needs in order to manipulate or to use this formula? So I hope you, we are clear about this one. Now let's proceed to the next, the median for grouped data. So for the median for grouped data, we have the formula, same with the mean to use in here. We have it here, as you can see. Please do memorize and take the notes so that you can follow or you'll be able to follow. So now the description for your MD, of course, this can be also, uh, sorry, I can't, uh, median can be also symbolized as this, okay? So again, I have to write it clearly. <laughs> Sorry for my penmanship. Oh no, okay, that's that one. So you can have it, uh, you can um, write it in this way or the symbol, but it's up to you. The symbol is not important. What is more important, you'll get it correctly. So your L there is the lower, exact lower limit of the median class, okay? exact lower limit of the median class. Your n there is your total number of items. Of course, same with the n in the mean. Your f is the less than or equal to cumulative frequency preceding the class interval containing the median. Your f is frequency of the median class. And of course, your i is the size of the class interval. Of course, I expected that you cannot relate as of this moment because we uh, you haven't uh, used this one unless if you encountered this one or this formula already. So now let's proceed to the example so that it will be easier for you to uh, memorize and of course appreciate this formula. So are you ready? I guess you're ready. Let's have an example. Find the median score of, a stu of students into advanced algebra. So the first thing that we have to do, of course, please memorize what are the requirements in the median, in solving the median for group data. You need a frequency, which is already a given. You have to need to find your L, the exact lower limit or lower boundary, if you could still remember, and of course, your cumulative frequency. It's fine that you don't need to, to get this one or you can erase this table, uh, this table or will not include this one if you wish. 
So these are the three things that you need. Of course, you need the frequency, you need the lower exact lower limit or lower boundary, and of course you have and uh, you have to get the cumulative frequency in order to solve or to use the formula that I just mentioned a while ago. And of course, you need your n. So how did you get your n? You just add it up, all the frequency that you have. So 5 plus 11 plus 17 plus 25 plus 20 plus 12 plus 7 plus 3. And then you got, you'll get rather 100. And of course, your i, how, to, how did you get your i? Why is it? It's 5. Try to think, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99. In short, from 95 to 99, there are, there is, how many interval? Five intervals. Again, they have, they have five intervals rather in each um, scores that we have. So from 95 to 99, as I have counted a while ago, 90, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99. So there are five intervals. So in short, I is five. Let's check for 90 to 94. 19, 91, 92, 93, 94. So still five. So that's how you get your class interval. I hope you will be able to remember, uh, you'll be able to remember this one. Okay. So now next is your question where, how did you get your L or the exact lower limit? I have to clear it up. This one, how to get this? Why is it 94.5? Okay, always remember that the exact lower limit is the, this one. This is your lower boundary. So the lower band, the boundary is 94.5 to 98 point, uh, to 99. Okay, so do not forget 94.5. Of course, for 90, you have it 89.5, just minus 0. 0.5. That's it. 85 becomes 84.5. 80 minus 0. 0.5 is 79.5. 75 minus 0. 0.5 becomes 74.5. Of course, 70 minus 0. 0.5 becomes 69.5. 65 minus 0. 0.5 becomes 64.5. And 60 minus 0. 0.5 becomes 59.5. Congratulations, Joe. I'm just joking. So this is how you get your exact lower limit or lower boundary. So now let's proceed to the next. Cumulative frequency. How did you get your cumulative frequency? So that's your problem now. How to get the cumulative frequency or your F. So you start with your N. What will be your N will be your starting point. Do not forget. What will be the what will be your N will be your starting point in here in your cumulative frequency. So since N is 100, then this one becomes 100. Okay, you start with 100. So next, you will subtract your, uh, I will just highlight you have to subtract cumulative frequency from your frequency. Okay, just get their difference. So how 100 minus 5 becomes 95. So that's your next cumulative frequency. Can you follow the pattern? So next, we'll just do the same. 95 minus 11 is 84. Then 84 minus 17 is 67. 67 minus 25 is 42. 42 minus 20 is 22 minus 12 is 10 minus 7 is 3 so you stop in here it's like this minus then you have it there and then next this one then here and then there you go sorry for the inconvenience okay it's like that okay i'll just finish this one okay so you will stop in three Okay, so do not forget how we got or how we get your cumulative frequency. Your basis is again, you get you your starting point is your and what will be your end will be your starting point in your cumulative frequency. So I hope you can follow. Okay, so just so a uh, very easy, right? So next, let's be reminded with the formula. We need your L. So your n over to your uh, minus f and then your f and then your i. So now, how did we get it? Uh, how did we, how do we solve your media now using the formula? Of course, the first thing that you're going to do, you have to identify the given. We need your l, we need your n, we need your f, we need your small f and we need your, uh, we need your i. So, of course, the first thing that you're going to do is identify your N. 
So after identifying your N, you'll have it. Your N is 100. Then get its median class. So how to get its median class? Just divide it by two. So is this is this always or is is this already is, is it or the formula is the formula always be used for finding your median class? Yes, exactly. So after you identify your n, of course, the first step that you're going to do, you have to uh, provide your frequency, this one and this one the lower limit boundary and of course the cumulative frequency after you're done with that you have to uh, divide your n by two to get your median class or your tentative median and that is where you base the value of your l in the formula your f and then small f and then your i okay so i hope you'll be able to follow that one again after providing the tables that we need or the columns that we need or the data that we need to solve your median then we have to identify your n and then divide it by two so we have it 50 after you get it after you have your 50 after dividing n by two you have to go back to the frequency where is the position of 50 so obviously, you can start from top to bottom. You can also you can you may also start from um, bottom to top, just to locate your fifty place or fiftieth place rather in the frequency. So now let's let's try to look. Five plus seven is sixteen. Then we have it sixteen plus seventeen. Uh, sorry. We have it 33, 15 plus 7, uh, again, 5 plus 11 is 16, 16 plus 17 is 33. In short, the 50th place can be located in 25, correct? Because when you add uh, 33 plus 25, that gives you 58. In short, you can find 50 in 25. That's how you do it when you start from top to bottom. So what if if I if I or if you start or if we start in uh, from bottom to top? So let's check. Let's try. Tw Seven plus three is ten plus twelve. Twenty-two plus twenty. Forty-two. Of course, forty-two is plus twenty-five. That gives you sixty-seven. In short, the the, the 50th place is or can be found in 25. Can you follow? Just do the same thing. It's up to you which one do you think is more comfortable for you to use. So you may use, you may uh, start from top to bottom or you may start from bottom to top. Okay, so please do not forget that one. That's the basic one. So since 50th uh, percentile or the its position can be located in here so this is where we get or we where we base our our given to subs to be substituted in the formula that we have so i hope you can follow so let's now uh, identify your low uh, your lower limit or lower boundary is 79.5 okay so that's why we have it 79.5 in there your frequency is 42 why 42 because your f the capital f in the formula means less than your cumulative frequency so this is our cumulative frequency the 67 what is the uh, less than 67 42 okay so meaning to say your F is less than your cumulative frequency, which is 42. So please do not forget that one. You listen carefully. Your F here is, of course, the frequency, your F, it's 25. We highlighted, okay? We identified the tentative median or your median class. So we base our given from the median class. How did we get it? using this formula and we will find the position of the n over 2. So of course your i based on the given is 5. So now we can just substitute them all. 
to the formula that we have. So I hope you can follow. You are solving there. So after we substitute, of course, your L, it's given. So we just substitute 50 is your N over 2. Okay, so minus 42, your F, and 25. So that gives you 79.5 plus 1.6. And that gives you 81.1. So this is our final answer. So I hope you can follow how to get the median class. Do not forget uh, the, the steps. What's the first step? Of course, you have to fill in the table. You need the frequency. You need the lower limit or lower boundary. You need the cumulative frequency. Please do not forget how did we get the cumulative frequency and how did we get the lower limit or lower boundary. And after that, you have to identify your N and, of course, your I. After, you have to divide your N by 2 or use this formula N over 2 to find the median class. And to find the median class, you have to locate the quotient of n over 2. Example, uh, based on our example, it's 50. So you have to locate 50. Where is 50 in the frequency? So if you found it, if you find it rather, or if you if we uh, if you already found it, then you can mark it everything in its row. So just like what we did there, in order to identify your L, your F, and then your F. So I hope you can follow. Are we all okay? Yes, we're all okay and on set. So please do not forget that one. So next, we have to move in solving the mode or getting the mode for group data. So to find the mode for group data, we also have a formula to use. This one is the formula. Let's just describe them. The lower boundary for the model class. When we say model class, that's what we call, same with the median, model class means tentative mode. Okay, so that is the exact lower limit of the model class. And of course, your D is, D sub 1 is the difference between the frequency of the model class and that of the frequency below the model class. And your D sub 2 is the difference between the frequency of the model class and that of the frequency above the model class. So the size of the class interval is your I. So I hope you can follow and memorize the formula. So now let's proceed to the next to appreciate the formula let's have an example last example for this lesson or in this video discussion in a group distribution the mo the class interval where the value with the highest frequency in the modal class the midpoint of the class interval is the no do not forget that one so let's have to consider the given set of data that we have the table Consider the distribution of the weekly wages of the factory workers in Matina Garment Factory. So where is the highest frequency in the distribution located? So what is the model class in the distribution? So first thing that you're going to do in the mode, very easy, locate which one has, a, has higher frequency. Okay, this is your F, of course. In the frequency, look at which one got the highest scores or the highest frequency that we have it's obviously the 31 so 31 has the highest frequency meaning to say it this is automatically our modal class so i'll just clean it up first so since 31 is what we found as the highest score or number of workers or f so this is our modal class you can mark it okay so after that class after that we have to remember the formula then we'll get the given. So, of course, the given that we have um, the lower class boundary for, for this in this given set, the 1,320 is the lower boundary, right, or lower limit. So, you have to subtract it with by or uh, subtract it with a 0. 0.5, right? So, subtract 1,320 to 0. 0.5. That gives you 1,319.5. Uh, Next, where did we get this one? Okay, D sub 1 means the difference between the frequency of the model class. What is the frequency? 31, right? So you just subtract it to the uh, below the 
model class or the frequency of the model class. What what is the this is our model class, right? So what is its uh below below 31? We have 24 or next uh 24 is below 31 or next to 31, which is below. Therefore, 31 minus 24, and this is your d sub 1. Again, how did we get your d sub 1 based in the uh, description, based on the description that we have? Subtract your model class, which is 31, to the or below the model class, which is 24. And of course, above your model class, that is your, that is 12, correct? And then 24 is below the model class. And 31 is the frequency of the model class. Again, I repeat, 31 here is the frequency of the model class. In 24, there is the frequency below the model class. And 12 is the frequency of the uh, above, uh, frequency above the model class. So, of course, your D sub 1 is you just subtract 31 to 24. Uh, frequency of the model class minus the frequency of uh, below the model class. So next is 31 minus 24. This is the D sub 1. We just, we're just we just following the formula. And how to get your D sub 2? Subtract your model class, which is 31, to the frequency of the uh, above the model class, which is 12. So that's why we have it 31 minus 12. So I hope you can follow. And of course, where did we get your 20? Your N. So your N is we add it up. We just add it up. 4 plus 6. Ah, uh, sorry. To get your N, your I is the, sorry, not the sum. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm so sorry. Your, this is not your N. 20 is not your N, but this is your I. Sorry, I did not read it. Your I is the size of the class interval. Again, 20 is your class or the size of the class interval. How did we get it? Just count the interval between 1,380 to 1,399 or 1,320 to 1,339. You can subtract them if you want so that it will be easier for you to identify your class interval. So 1,380, please, um, please uh, do it, minus... 1,399, then you can get the difference, 90, uh, 20, sorry, oh, uh, uh, including 1,380, sorry, you can count 1,380, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 19, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, so there are 20 of them from 1,380 to 1,399. So I hope you can follow. That's how you get you get your 20. Do not subtract it because you will lack one. <laughs> You'll not include the 1,380 in the counting. So please uh, remember how did we get the I? Same as how we got it in your median and mean. So after that, we have it. 31 minus 24 is 7. And then 7 plus 19. So we have it 7 over 26. Multiply it by 20. That gives you 140 over 26. Just copy 1,319.5, which is your lower limit of the modal class. This one. So after that, you divide this one. That gives you 5.38. And you just add it up to the lower class boundary or the uh, lower limit of the modal class. And that gives you approximately 1,324.88. Therefore, the model, the model weekly wage of the factory workers is approximately 1,324.88 pesos. So I hope you will be able to remember the process in finding the mode of group data. Again, what's the first step? Look at which one has the greatest or ha, uh, highest score in the frequency. That's why we have it 31 and then mark it as your modal class. This one. And of course, you need to find and remember the formula. So we need the lower limit, which we got it from the modal class or lower boundary of the modal class. Subtract it to 0.5. That's why we have it 1,319.5. And after that, identify your D sub 1. How to get your D sub 1? This one. The difference between the frequency of the modal class and that of the frequency below the modal class. How, to, how did you get 
uh, your D sub 2, the difference between the frequency of the modal class, that of the frequency above the modal class. How to get your I? Just count how many intervals do you have from the modal class that we have from the weekly wages or from the class um, score. Okay? So I hope you will be able to remember these because we will end our lesson in the central measures of central tendency for group data in here. In the next video discussion, we will be talking about the measures of variabilities, the synthetic division, uh, what I mean, the standard deviation, the range, of course. And of course, after that, we will be also uh, include the discussions about the uh, measures of positions, though we already started at that, but we, I will just give a highlight about the concept of it. So I hope everybody got it correctly. So do not forget that the essence of mathematics is not to make simple things complicated, but to make complicated things simple. And always remember also math is fun. Do not forget to share this channel to your friends out there so you will be able to help them improve their performance in mathematics. So have a great night. Have a great day. So enjoy learning mathematics. Math is fun. Thank you.